One hot label target encoding. Yeah, Stack Quest. Hello, I'm Josh Starmer, and welcome to Stack Quest. Today, we're going to talk about one hot label and target encoding, and they're going to be clearly explained. You don't have to worry about the details of scaling your stuff up in the cloud because Lightning will take care of it for you. Bam. This stat quest is also brought to you by the letters A, B, and C. A, always. B, B, C, curious. Always be curious. Imagine we had this data and we wanted to use favorite color and height to predict if someone loves Troll 2, which is a movie that some people love and some people don't. In this case, favorite color has three discrete values, blue, red, and green. Now, in theory, discrete features, like favorite color, are fine for most machine learning algorithms. But in practice, a lot of popular machine learning algorithms, including neural networks, do not work well with them. As a result, discrete data are often converted into numerical values before being used for machine learning. One popular method for converting discrete variables or features into numbers is to use something called one-hot encoding. When we have three or more options for a discrete variable and, in the case of favorite color, we have three options, we start by creating a new column for each option. In this case, that means creating three new columns, blue, red, and green. Now, in the blue column, we set the value to 1 if we had blue in the original favorite color column, and we set the remaining values to 0. Likewise, for the red column, we set the value to 1 the one time we had red in the original favorite color column, and we set the remaining values to 0. Lastly, for the green column, we set the value to 1 if we had green in the original favorite color column, and we set the remaining values to 0. Note. The last column, Loves Troll 2, is also discrete, but it only has two options, yes and no. So we simply replace yes with 1 and no with 0. And now all of the columns in our new dataset are numeric and can be used with algorithms that don't do well with discrete data, like neural networks or XGBoost. Bam! Using one-hot encoding to convert discrete data into numeric data works fine when we don't have too many options. In this case, we only have three options for favorite color. So we replace favorite color with three new columns. But when we have a lot of options, for example, if we had a column of postal codes and there are 41,683 postal codes in the United States, then we would end up replacing the one postal code column with 41,683 new columns, which might make the data difficult to work with. So, when we have tons of options for a discrete variable, one alternative to one-hot encoding is to simply assign numbers from low to high to each option. So, in this case, we might set blue to zero, red to one, and green to two. And just like before, we could convert Love's Troll 2 to be numeric by setting yes to 1 and no to 0. Simply converting the discrete values to random numbers, like what we did here, is called label encoding. And again, just like before, all of the columns are now numeric and we can run the data through a neural network. Double BAM! Note, one thing that people don't like about using label encoding is that the numbers we use are just arbitrary. And some machine learning algorithms will treat the order of the numbers as if they might mean something, and that can cause problems. For example, a decision tree splitting on favored color would be forced to group red and green together, or blue and red together, simply because of the random numbers we assign to each color. So, instead of just picking random numbers to represent the options blue, red, and green, we can calculate the mean value of the target, the thing we want to predict, which in this case is Love's Troll 2, for each option. For example, 
Of the three people that like the color blue, only one of them loves troll two. So the mean value for blue is one divided by three, or 0.33. So we replace blue with 0.33. Likewise, because only one person likes red and they do not love troll two, the mean for red is zero. So we replace red with zero. Lastly, because two of three people who like green also love Troll 2, we replace green with 0.67. Because we use the target, the thing we want to predict, to determine what values to replace the discrete options, this method is called target encoding. That being said, we've only talked about the simplest type of target encoding. A more commonly used version of target encoding deals with the fact that we only had one person who liked the color red. And that means we only used one person to determine the mean value for red. And thus, we don't have a lot of data supporting the use of zero to replace red. In contrast, both blue and green have more data, three people each, supporting the values we use to replace them. Because less data supports the value we replaced red with, we have less confidence that we replaced red with the best value than we have for blue and green. So, in order to deal with this, target encoding usually is done using a weighted mean that combines the mean for a specific option, like red, with the overall mean of the target, which is Love's Troll 2. For example, in order to use the fancier target encoding with our data, we start by plugging in the mean of the target for blue, 1 divided by 3. Then, because 3 people were used to calculate the mean for blue, we plug in 3 for n. Then we plug in the overall mean for the target, loves troll 2, 3 divided by 7, because, overall, 3 of the 7 people love troll 2. Now we just need to pick a value for m, the weight for the overall mean. M is a user-defined parameter, or hyperparameter, and in this example, we set M equal to 2. Setting M equal to 2 means we need at least three rows of data before the option mean, the mean we calculated for blue, becomes more important than the overall mean. Now we just do the math and get 0.37. So we plug in 0.37 for blue. Now we calculate the weighted mean for red, Beep, boop, boop, beep, 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 boop, beep, beep. And we get 0 0.29. So we plug in 0 0.29 for red. Lastly, we calculate the weighted mean for green. Beep, boop, 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 beep. And we get 0 0.57. So we plug in 0 0.57 for green. Bam. Now let's compare the target encoding when we use the weighted mean to the target encoding without the weighted mean. The target encoding for blue and green are similar to what they were before. And this makes sense because we had a relatively large amount of data for both blue and green. In contrast, with the weighted mean, the value for red is much closer to the overall mean than before. And this also makes sense because we have so little data for red, only one row. In a way, we can think of the overall mean as our best guess given no data. However, as we get more data, more rows for each option, we use the data more, rather than our best guess, to determine the target encoding. Note, if you're familiar with Bayesian methods, this approach may look familiar because a lot of Bayesian methods boil down to calculating a weighted average between a guess and the data. As a result, some people call this Bayesian mean encoding. Triple BAM! Note, some of you may have noticed that we are using the target, the thing we want to predict, to modify the values in favorite color. And doing this sort of thing is a data science no-no that we call data leakage. Data leakage results in models that work great with training data, but not so well with testing data. In other words, data leakage results in models that are overfit. The good news is that there are a bunch of relatively simple ways to avoid data leakage, or at least reduce the amount of data leakage, so that you can use target encoding without overfitting your model. 
One of the most popular methods to reduce leakage is called K-fold target encoding. So let's go back to the original dataset that had blue, red, and green categories for favored color and talk about K-fold target encoding. Note, the word fold in K-fold target encoding refers to splitting the data into equal-sized subsets, and the K refers to how many subsets we create. For example, if we did two-fold target encoding, then we would divide the data into two equal-sized subsets. Note, because we have an uneven number of rows, we just made the subsets as similar in size as possible. Now, to make it easier to keep track of things, let's label the first subset A and the second subset B. Now, to target encode blue in subset A, we ignore the target values in this subset. In other words, we ignore the values for Love's Troll 2 in this subset and, instead, plug the target values from subset B into the weighted mean equation. We start by plugging in the subset B mean of the target for blue, 0 divided by 1, because the one person in subset B that likes blue does not love troll 2. Then, because there is only one person in subset B that likes blue, we plug in 1 for n. Then we plug in the overall mean for the target in subset B, 1 divided by 3, because, overall, one of the three people in subset B loves troll 2. And, just like we did before, we'll set M equal to 2. Now we just do the math and get 0.22. So we plug in 0.22 for the two rows in subset A with blue. Now we need to target encode the one row with blue in subset B. So we ignore the target values in this subset. And, instead, plug the target values from subset A into the equation for the weighted mean. Then we do the math and get 0.5. So we plug in 0.5 for blue, but only in subset B. Note, you may have noticed that the different subsets have different values for blue. This is okay because favorite color is becoming a continuous variable just like height. Now let's encode the color red in subset A. So we ignore the target values in subset A and, instead, plug the target values from subset B into the equation for the weighted mean. Now, because subset B doesn't have anyone who likes the color red, the mean for red is 0, and n equals 0. The other values are the same as before, and we end up replacing red in subset A with 0.33. Likewise, green in subset A uses the target values in subset B and turns into 0.42. And green, in subset B, uses the target values from subset A and turns into 0.67. Now that each color and each subset has been encoded, we merge the subsets back together. And we're done. Note, this process reduces data leakage because the rows do not use their own target values to calculate their encoding. Bam! Now, Going back to the original data with blue, red, and green, if we set k equal to 7, then we would divide the data into 7 subsets. Now, target encoding the first subset, which consists of a single row with favorite color equal to blue, means we ignore its target value and use the target values from all of the other subsets to calculate the weighted mean. Likewise, encoding the other subsets would use all of the other target values except their own. Note, when we use all of the target values except one to do the encoding, it's called leave one out target encoding. A quick scan of the internet shows that some people are successful with leave one out target encoding, and other people are successful with setting k equal to 5. Triple bam! Now it's time for some... Shameless self-promotion. If you want to review statistics and machine learning offline, check out the StatQuest PDF study guides and my book, The StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning, at statquest.org. There's something for everyone.
Hooray! We've made it to the end of another exciting stat quest. If you like this stat quest and want to see more, please subscribe. And if you want to support StatQuest, consider contributing to my Patreon campaign, becoming a channel member, buying one or two of my original songs or a t-shirt or a hoodie, or just donate. The links are in the description below. Alright, until next time, quest on!